Hi, am I in the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? Don, I got you. Don, Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's bad grounded, I don't trust these feelings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air High as Max on the cloud Am I in the air, Sunday night's round time I flex my I'm dead of Ultron Transform to DX Don, Mega and Austin You probably think I'm nice, cause I slow like a stream To your wireless device, and the smoke full of steam on any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega, and I'm your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me tonight to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news, television, movies, non-spoiler reviews. This is the place you come to. It's season 26, it's episode 24, and tonight's show is titled Man Eater. Uh, We're going to be breaking down the news from June 21st through June 27th, everything up until the moment that I hit this record button. So we're going to be talking all about it. I got a movie for you guys, got a couple TV shows, and then of course we'll get into the news of the week. All right. Before we jump on in, have you listened to our spoiler review mega spectacular episode? We dropped it last week. We went live on YouTube. Did the video, and then we had the audio version put up on the page for everybody. But if you haven't listened to it yet, if you've missed it for some reason, check it out, man. This was a massive episode for us to do, and I want to make sure it gets all the love in the world. Myself, Friggins, Peeps, we got together, and we did not one, not two, but three spoiler reviews talking Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, talking Transformers Rise of the Beast, and talking, of course, The Flash. So we did all three of these on one episode. Now, for some of you that may not have seen all three of these movies, but maybe want to listen to one or two, but you're worried about click and play and having something spoiled for you. Well, don't worry because on the video version on the YouTube channel, if you look in the, um, basically in the description box, you will see time codes. If you click it, it'll bring you right to what you want to listen to. So if you want to listen to the flash, click on the flash. It'll take you right there. If you want to listen to transformers, click on it. It'll take you right there. Same thing for the audio podcast. There is a section on the audio page that says chapters. If you click it, you will see chapters for all three spoiler reviews. Click the one you want to listen to and then come back and listen to the rest whenever you've checked out those movies. So no excuses, guys. Make sure you check that out. The Am I Still on the Air? Across the Spider-Verse, Transformers Rise of the Beast, and the Flash spoiler reviews. Check it out. Check it out. Okay, let's jump on in with our one big movie review of the week, and it is the new comedy, No Hard Feelings. This is a new romance comedy, uh, you know, throwback, raunchy comedy. This is an R-rated comedy. We haven't had something like this in quite some time, and, you know, this trailer came out of nowhere a couple months back, saw it debut with Jennifer Lawrence, and... Was like, I don't know, man. I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. And then watched the Red Band trailer and absolutely loved it. Um, So definitely went to the theater. Check this one out. Uh, The story is this. On the brink of losing her childhood home, Maddie discovers an intriguing job listing. Wealthy helicopter parents looking for someone to date their introverted 19-year-old son, Percy, before he leaves for college. To her surprise, Maddie soon discovers the awkward Percy is no sure thing. 
Um, so yeah, so basically the story premise is a little weak. I'll say that, right? She's an Uber driver. She's behind on her taxes. Her car gets repoed. And she's like, how can I be an Uber driver with no car, right? And she comes across this ad in the paper from these parents saying, hey, we want someone to date our son, date in quotes. Um, And if you do that, we will give you a car. We have an extra car and we will give it to you for free for doing this for us. So she kind of is like, all right. Easy peasy, right? I'll get this guy to uh, fall in love with me real quick. I'll get this car, and then I'm out. But, of course, things aren't as simple as that. Going back to Jennifer Lawrence on this thing, you know, Jennifer is a great actress. I mean, you know, a lot of people will think of the Hunger Games, will think of Mystique in the X-Men films, but she's done so much drama. This is the first full-blown comedy she has done. And I got to say, she kills it in this movie. She is phenomenal in this movie. Her comedic timing is off the charts. And there's a scene in this movie that you will never see coming that she does. And you got to give her props for going there. Uh, It's awesome. And it also ties in with our show title tonight, Maneater. Uh, The song Maneater from Hall & Oates uh, plays a couple different roles in this movie. But there's a scene at the beach with Maneater playing. And uh, when you see it, you'll be like, what? Yep. And uh, she goes there and she's awesome in it. So I really wanted to shout her out. Um, I forget the kid's name that plays Percy, the guy she's going after. Um, But he's really cool, man. He's a quirky little dude. Um, But he pulls it off. Everything he pulls off, um, it it works in this movie. And it's really, really funny. Uh, Natalie Morales pops up. But she's always funny every time she pops up. And she's like the best friend. Uh, Scott MacArthur, who I fell into this guy when I watched the show The Mick a couple years ago on Fox. He was so hilarious on that show. So it was cool to see him back here doing more comedy work. Uh, Of course, Matthew Broderick, one of the parents here in the movie. Uh, so really good, solid cast here, but really it, it, this is all led by Jennifer Lawrence. And, uh, for the most part, this movie works on pretty much every level. Uh, you go into a comedy, your one job is to make me laugh. And I felt like it made me laugh pretty damn consistently. Um, story wise, it's something you've seen done before. It's nothing new. It's nothing fresh. It's the same kind of, you know, um, kind of old school date movie where, you know, the person, you know, you wonder they're going to find out and what's going to happen. How's the twist and turns, you know, it's the same kind of premise. The blueprint is the same. Um, but how we get there's a little bit different. And, and I really appreciated the ending. I like the the twist and turns the movie kind of takes you on. So it's not straightforwardly the same shit. Um, but it is to an extent, which is why, I can't go much higher on my score than what I did, um, but I really did enjoy this movie, and I would recommend it. So, no hard feelings. I gave three and a half out of five stars, and for those of you who've been listening to me for a long time, you know I hate half stars, so believe me, it pained me to go three and a half here. I just couldn't really go four just because of the story, and I didn't feel like the um, comedy was... It starts off super, super strong. Like, the first hour of the movie i think i laughed my ass off and then the second half kind of drops off a bit but that's pretty typical with movies like this but that also held me back from going into a four or five star kind of category but i did think it was better than a three but not quite to a four so we did have to settle at a three and a half out of five for no hard feelings but like i said big thumbs up and i would definitely recommend to check that out Okay, that's all I got on the movie side. Switching on over to the TV side, our big new release of the week is Marvel, baby. We are back with Marvel and Disney+, Plus, and this is the new show, Secret Invasion. We've been waiting for this one for a while. We're in Phase 5 now. We knew we were getting this show with Samuel L. Jackson coming back as Nick Fury. He comes back to Earth. He needs to figure out what's going on because the scrolls are back. And, um, you know, and you know from Captain Marvel... The Skrulls were our friends. They were nice aliens. Well, there's another batch of them that ain't so nice, and and shit's hitting the fan already. This was a great season premiere. Um, You see a lot of familiar faces in it, but it immediately you can tell the tone. It's darker. It's twistier. um, It's jaded to an extent. Um, 
it's very much like the Winter Soldier vibe, stuff like that. And I really, really dug it and can't wait to see the ride that this show takes us on as we continue through it. Um, hell of a cliffhanger ending on the first episode out the gate. So where do we go from here? We will find out. But big thumbs up here for Secret Invasion, which will air new episodes every Wednesday on Disney+. Plus. And then a couple of just quick shout outs. Strange New Worlds is back for season two. This is the Star Trek show. Um, I love this show. I'm not a big Star Trek guy. Don't really like most of the Star Trek shows that pop up. But I checked out Strange New Worlds last year when season one dropped. And really fell in love with this crew and this cast and just the way the show runs. I liked it a lot. So obviously the show was a big hit. Got renewed for season two. Season two is dropped. The first two episodes are out. And I'm digging it so far, man. I think it's off to a very strong start. Um, Anson Mount, just I think he's such the perfect fit as Captain Pike in this show. He's so good. And um, I just really dig it, man. I really dig it. So big shout out here to Strange New Worlds if you're a Star Trek fan. Or even if you're not, you should check this one out. It is now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. And lastly, I know I'm way late to the game. Well, no, I wouldn't say way late. I think I'm like a month late. But uh, I finally finished Ted Lasso Season 3. And what a finale. It was incredible. I love Ted Lasso. Always been such a big fan of this show. Just kind of fell behind a little bit on this season just because the episodes were so much damn longer. Season 1 and 2, the episodes were like a half hour. Season 3, everything's over an hour long. So it took a lot longer to binge through. Um, But the last episode is a perfect send-off. It is such a good finale episode. It leaves you with the feels and it puts you in a good spot. Will this really be the series finale? Because we still haven't gotten word from anybody involved that this is it. Now, all the rumors are that this is it and this was the full, you know, series finale. But there's been a lot of other rumors saying, you know, we could have spinoffs. We can continue in a different way. Maybe it won't be with Ted anymore, but it will be with the different characters following the soccer team still. Um We'll have to wait and see because there's been no official decision. But if the show does decide to end here, mwah, beautiful ending. I loved it. And uh, definitely check out Ted Lasso season three if you haven't. It was a it was a great, great season. All right, guys, that's what we got. All right. We have no hard feelings now in theaters. Three and a half out of five stars. So check that out. Secret Invasion over on Disney Plus. New episodes every Wednesday. Strange New Worlds over on Paramount Plus. Uh, season two and Ted Lasso all episodes now streaming for season three over on Apple TV plus. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk box office and boy, was it a doozy at the box office this weekend coming in number 10. It was the boogeyman. Number nine is the blackening. Number seven is guardians of the galaxy. Volume three number. um... Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lavino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Sam, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's Alternate Side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing. Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. Whoa. 10, 9, 8, 7. Coming in at number 7. I totally lost count where I was at. Number 10, The Boogeyman. Number 9, The Blackening. Number 8, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Number 7, The Little Mermaid. Number six, Asteroid City. Number five, Transformers Rise of the Beast. Number four, No Hard Feelings making its debut. Number three, The Flash. Yes, The Flash went from number one to number three in just one week. Number two, Elemental. And number one, once again, out of nowhere, baby, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse jumps back into the number one spot. The story here, The Flash. The Flash was the number one movie last weekend. Remember, we talked about it on last week's show, how it was estimated to make about 70 mil, and it only made 55. This weekend, it dropped 72.5% week over week. That is the biggest drop ever 
for a comic book movie, for a DC movie, seventy two point five percent massive drop. It went from fifty five million dollars to just fifteen million. Um, the Jennifer Lawrence movie, No Hard Feelings, only was behind the Flash by only a hundred thousand dollars. That's it. That's how close No Hard Feelings could have even jumped across the Flash, and the Flash would have been number four. But it did hold in at number three. But it is so neck and neck that I'm surprised things didn't change when the final numbers came out. Wow, guys. I mean, in its entire run so far, which is, I mean, it's only been two weeks, but it's only made $87 million. This movie's going to be a massive flop. And it's unfortunate because this movie is fantastic. It is such a good movie. I really don't understand the hate. We went from an opening where on Twitter everybody was loving this movie to now when you look at Twitter, everybody's talking shit about what a piece of crap it is. And you're like, what happened? You know, where where the hell was all the people that were loving this thing a week ago? Right? This thing's still fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. So why is no one going to see it? It's It's very, very odd. And I think we'll be scratching our heads on this one for quite a bit. But yeah, The Flash, only 15 mil, drops to number three. Elemental, which came out the same weekend as The Flash, held on okay. It only dropped 37%. Um, And then Spider-Man, dude, only dropped 29% and jumped back into the number one spot. So pretty damn amazing there. So that's your box office, guys. Now let's switch gears and let's get into our news of the week. High School Musical, the musical, is going to officially end with its upcoming fourth season. That's right. The fourth season of Disney Plus's High School Musical, the musical, will be the series last. Nine Perfect Strangers, a show that I watched. It was on Hulu with Nicole Kidman. Um, I thought it had so much more potential than what the show turned out to be. It had a lot of great casting to it. Some big, big guest stars based on a book. When the show was over, the show was over, and I kind of went on with my life. Hulu has just announced that Nine Perfect Strangers has officially been picked up for a season two, and Nicole Kidman will be coming back, but it looks like we're going to have a new series of uh, guest stars to be on this show with her. Um, Yeah, so we will see Charlie Barnett uh, from The White Lotus. He is in early negotiations to join the cast, and we'll have to see how the rest of the cast fills out, but... I'm interested, man. You know, this is a show I didn't love, but I didn't hate either. Kind of was just in the middle for me. So I guess depending on the cast they get, we'll see how it turns out. But yeah, Nine Perfect Strangers officially been renewed for season two over on Hulu. All right. You know how we're going to have that Spider-Man spinoff movie with Bad Bunny? Well, it no longer has a release date over at Sony. El Morato, um is looks like it's going to be off the books. And then shortly after the announcement was made that it didn't have a release date at Sony no more, it looks like um, Bad Bunny has dropped off the movie. So it looks like he is no longer attached. So, yeah, we'll see if the uh, movie is officially scrapped or if they're going to try to go a different direction with it. But that's where we're currently at on this one over here. We have an article up with the plot details for M. Night Shyamalan's new movie that he's doing called Trap, and you can check that out if you'd like to know more. Blumhouse TV has uh, nabbed rights to a new psychological thriller novel called The Quiet Tenant, and this will be something they're going to develop into a TV show. Brad Pitt and Joseph Kaczynski Formula One movie has officially been given some story details, so check that out if you are interested in some more. Uh, John Wick Chapter 4 director Chad Stahelski says he's been working on a director's cut. That's right, director's cut slash extended cut of John Wick 4, which is kind of crazy, right? It's the longest film in the franchise history at like 2 hours and 40 minutes, and they're like, let's do an extended cut. But hey, we all love this movie. It's so good, so I'd be down for a director's cut. Uh, It sounds like it's going to be about 10 to 15 minutes longer. He says he's almost done with it. And, um, yeah, I'll definitely be checking this one out when it debuts. Hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Uh, Barons has officially been pulled from the CW primetime schedule after just four episodes. Uh, the Chi is uh, coming back. That's right. The Chi season six is coming back, and we have the trailer for the upcoming Showtime series. Um we have the trailer. It's the first trailer for the expanded split season six. 
And again, Showtime officially merging with Paramount Plus as of today, so you can get everything under one app umbrella. Gronish sets big expectations for its sixth and final season, and we have the first full trailer for that to check out. Blue Beetle director confirms that his film is in the DCU, and that uh, and they're talking future installments of the superhero universe. Of course, this movie hits theaters on August 18th. I I don't know if I believe the director um, that Blue Beetle is in the DCU. Because remember, just on last week's show, we talked about how James Gunn said Blue Beetle is the first official character, but Superman is the first official movie. So, I told you, that seems like this movie is not a part of the DCU, but they're just going to keep the character. But I don't know, man. Until James Gunn tells me otherwise, I'm on a wait-and-see approach on Blue Beetle. Um, I think we'll see the character again. I don't know if this movie is going to be a part of the vision, uh, since I know Gunn was not at the helm of this one here from a producer standpoint. So, we'll wait and see. I know he likes to say that, you know, this isn't tied to anything. It's in its own world. So, it will be a part of the DCU. But, is it though? Is it though? We will wait and see on that. We'll see what Gunn says over on that. Uh, Paramount Plus green lights a season two of a new crime drama called Last Kings of the Cross. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is negotiating to sell around half of its stored Warner Studios film and TV music publishing assets for approximately $500 million. That's right, David Zaslav, who is such the businessman, is looking to sell off a lot of Warner Brothers stuff to other outlets. So even though they have Max and they have things that are under their own umbrella, he's looking to outsource it and make that money. So there you go there. Dan and Shay have joined The Voice as the first ever coaching duo for the upcoming season 25. We have the trailer for Dumb Money. I love this trailer. I think this movie is going to be awesome. This is based on the true story about the GameStop stock. And uh, yeah, it's the drama from January 2021 when the GameStop GameStop stock went crazy. Um, This movie stars Seth Rogen, Paul Dano, Shailene Woodley, Sebastian Stan, Pete Davidson, American Ferreira, um, and Nick Offerman. This looks awesome. Awesome. So definitely check out the trailer for Dumb Money. Mortal Kombat 2 is officially begun production for the live action sequel. So hell yeah. Mortal Kombat! We have the trailer for the Beanie Bubble. That's right. Zach Galifianakis and Elizabeth Banks uh, on the true story about the Beanie Babies. This is coming to Apple TV+. Plus. James Mangold says that his DC adaptation of Swamp Thing will be a gothic horror movie. Uh, He says he's not too worried about the bigger universe. He just wants to make his little gothic horror movie. So we'll see how that all pans out down the road. Um, Evil Dead Rise is now officially streaming on Max. So if you haven't watched it, check it out because it's awesome. Um, Casino Royale director Martin Campbell says that Henry Cavill would have been an excellent James Bond if Daniel Craig didn't exist at the time. He said he looked great in his audition, his acting was tremendous, but he just looked a little too young at the time, so he went with Daniel Craig. But man, he was reflecting on it, saying he would have been such a good pick, which we still say, I think... Henry Cavill should be the new Bond in the new version, so let's get him, guys. He came so close the last time. Why not make it official? I think we should totally do it. Um, Love Henry Cavill. If you ain't going to get to be Superman, at least let him be James Bond, right? That's the way I look at it. The Walking Dead, Dead City, has scored AMC Plus's biggest season premiere ever. So congratulations there. That is awesome. Comic-Con facing some trouble. That's right. We heard... Last week that Marvel was not going to go to Comic-Con. Well, now it's ramping up, man. Disney, Marvel, Lucasfilm, not planning any panels at Comic-Con. HBO isn't going. Sony's not going. Universal's not going. Netflix isn't going. All of them are skipping it. And now we're just waiting for the rest to fall in line. So, yeah, Comic-Con might just be going back to an old school convention this year where you're not going to see anything from television and movies. Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies, Star Trek Prodigy uh, have been canceled over at Paramount Plus. And not only have they been canceled at Paramount Plus, but they've been pulled from the streamer already, which is kind of crazy that these shows would get canceled and then yanked within three days of being canceled, man. 
Um, the crazy thing is my wife just started watching Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies, got like three episodes in, and then she was like, where did it go? And I had to break the news to her that, yeah, it's gone and you'll never be able to see it again. I think it's super fucked up to these, uh, you know, to these artists, to these makers, the cast and crews that put these shows together. I mean, it's one thing to be canceled, but then to be yanked off a streamer so fast. I mean, I get that a lot of these streamers are kind of like selling content off and trying to make, you know, tax um, tax write-offs, different things like that. But give it a little bit of time, guys. Like, I mean, give it a couple months at least. Like, Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies just finished its season a couple weeks ago, and the thing's already gone. So... Just very interesting, man. I hope that a lot of, you know, there are a lot of shows that I bookmark and I say, I'll get to it when I get to it. Now I'm a little worried that, man, if I don't get to it in time, are they just going to yank it? Like, so that that's really, really unfortunate, man. Um, Yeah, The Game is another one. So th- these are four shows that happened to. The Game, Cre- Grease, Rise of the Pink Lady, Star Trek Prodigy, and Queen of the Universe. Uh, all canceled and will be removed from the streaming um, service. Like I said, Grease and Star Trek Prodigy have already been removed. Pete Davidson's Peacock series, Bupkiss, has been renewed for a second season. So congratulations there. That's pretty awesome. I love Bupkiss season one, so glad to see it coming back there. Taylor Sheridan talks to Matthew McConaughey-led Yellowstone follow-up. Um, rumor has it that Sasha Baron Cohen might be doing a new Ali G project. Wicked son Booyakasha I love Ali G This is my favorite character the Sasha Baron Cohen plays If you ever used to watch HBO Way back in the day He had a show called the Ali G show And it was phenomenal It's where Borat came from And um, But I've always loved the character of Ali G So I hope he brings it back And I hope he does something fresh with it Because that would be well, well wicked Um, Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse Release date might be delayed likely delayed that's what the artists say that have worked on the movie they're saying they barely got across the spider-verse done in time and that they're nowhere near being complete on beyond the spider-verse so you know from an insider perspective they don't think it's going to make the release date but nothing official has been announced in the last couple days there's been a little fake press release that went out that says the movie's been released to 20 delayed to 2026 Complete fake article, completely fake. It was tweeted out by a fan account acting like they were a legitimate account. Um, It's just such bullshit. And the amount of people that have read that and have retweeted it and are talking about it, guys, it's fake. It's all fake. The movie is still on schedule for now. Will it get delayed? Possibly. But do you really think it's going to get delayed three years to 2026? No, that doesn't make any fucking sense. So... Um, again, we'll keep you posted if anything official happens, but as of right now, the movie is still on track. Uh, we have the trailer for fear the night, which is Maggie Q's new action movie. We also have the trailer for drive away dolls, uh, which is Ethan Cohen's new comedy movie. We have the trailer of survival of the thickest, which is a new Netflix comedy show. Brian Cranston says that they are talking about a possible Malcolm in the middle reunion. So maybe you might see that here soon. Paddington 3 is officially ramping up, and Antonio Banderas, Rachel Zegler have joined the Paddington movie that will be filmed in Peru. Elizabeth Olsen and Alicia Vikander are set to lead a new sci-fi drama movie called The Assessment. Uh, I like the sounds of this. I like sci-fi. I like drama. I love Elizabeth Olsen, and I love Alicia Vikander, so this all sounds good to me. Magnum P.I. officially canceled over at NBC And it will end with its upcoming season 5B That's right, so Magnum, which was on AB or was on C- CBS Magnum P.I. was on CBS for four seasons And then it got canceled And then NBC scooped in and said We will revive it and put it up on NBC They did for a season 5 Half of the season has aired already uh, And the ratings just haven't been that good So... Uh, the whole season has already been filmed. The second half of the season's coming back soon. Um, and now they've officially announced that will be it. So, yes, Magna P.I. canceled officially again for the second time. And after they finish this uh, season 5B, it will wrap up. Harley Quinn, the animated series, gets a season 4 release date in July over on Max. The Flash's Grant Gustin and Pretty Little Liars' Lucy Hale are set to star in a new freebie movie called Puppy Love. 
So we'll see how that turns out. The um, new show that will be starring Retta, it was a new mystery drama she was doing. It will not be moving forward over at NBC, which is a bummer because I like her and I was looking forward to this show. So sucks to hear that that show will not be moving forward at all anymore. Um, let's see here. Sorry, I'm just skipping through some box office stuff since we already talked about that. Um, Daryl Dixon's Lost at Sea in the teaser trailer for the new Walking Dead spinoff. So make sure you check that out um, for the first teaser trailer for there. Um, We have an article up that breaks down basically all the different... Uh, movies that are coming out um, all within 30 days of each other. That's right, Indiana Jones 5, Barbie, Oppenheimer, Mission Impossible 7, all opening within 30 days of each other. And it talking about how this will be a stress test for the movie theaters and seeing if people will continue to go, which ones will fizzle out. Uh, we also have another article up where it's just talking about the year in general, the box office hits is and the misses all within this first half of 2023. So check those out if you're interested. Um, Baraka will be in the upcoming Mortal Kombat 2, so that's pretty cool there. Um, Simon Pegg says that the boys season four is even crazier than anything you've seen in the first three seasons, which gets me really, really excited. Book Club, the next chapter is the next movie that will be leaving theatrical and going to Peacock. So keep an eye out for that to hit the streamer here soon. Um, we got an article up with the director of Mission Impossible 7 talking about why Dead Reckoning is two movies. Long story short, they got a really good story, they got a really big cast, and they couldn't squeeze into one film, so that's why. Uh, Gal Gadot says that the script is finished for Red Notice 2 and that it's awesome and they should be filming soon, so I'm excited about that. I did really like Red Notice, so I'm looking forward to the next chapter of that. The Flash may lose WB over $200 million. Oh, God. We talked about it being a flop. Over $200 million is painful. Painful, especially for a movie that was damn good. So it really, really bumped me out. The show The Idol over on Max will consist of just five episodes, and the season finale will air this Sunday. So, yeah, that show came and went real quick. Um, I actually dig this show, though. You know, like I know a lot of people are hating on it. I watch The Idol every single week, and I kind of dig it. So, <laughs> sucks that it's only five episodes. We'll see if HBO um, picks it up for another season or not. But as of now, this will be the season finale airing this Sunday. Elizabeth Banks is set to lead a new vanity thriller alongside Lewis Pullman and Nathan Fillion called Skincare. So that should be pretty cool. Um, John Goodman says that the Connors may be coming to an end with its upcoming season six. I agree. I think it's time. Let's wrap up the Connors, guys. We have your BET Award 2023 complete winners list. So there you go. All the big winners from the latest BET Awards that was just held uh, this past June 25th in Los Angeles. Um, We officially have, this is the big news that broke earlier today. This is why I'm so happy that I record on Tuesdays now because the news broke today. We've been hearing a lot of rumors about Who's going to be Superman and Lois Lane in the upcoming James Gunn Superman movie? So much speculation. So many articles about who screen tested, who they like, who they don't like. Even though I still feel Henry Cavill should have remained on as Superman. I get it. Reboot the universe. Let's start all over. He really shouldn't be keeping anything from the DCU. Just saying. Especially after the flesh. Um, but we, it's official, ladies and gentlemen, you know, James Gunn is writing and directing the new, uh, Superman legacy movie, which will hit theaters on July 11th, 2025. And we officially have our Superman slash Clark Kent and Lois Lane. Superman will be played by David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnahan will be playing Lois Lane. Um, so great casting here. I don't know much about David. I know he's been in some shows, he's been in some movies, but it's all stuff I haven't seen. But from everything I've heard or read, he's pretty damn solid. So that's really good to hear. As far as Rachel goes, I know her from the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. 
Um, and she's fantastic on that show. And she is a wonderful actress with a lot of awards. And I can totally see her nailing Lois Lane. So this looks to be some really solid casting. David Cornsweet and Rachel Brosnahan will be playing Superman and Lois Lane in James Gunn's Superman Legacy, once again opening in theaters on July 11th, 2025. Superman is my favorite character. I hold it very close. I'm a big Henry Cavill fan. I'm still very hurt that Henry is not coming back to be Superman. But I hope David does an amazing job. I trust in James Gunn and his vision. And I think if he saw something in David, I will see it too. So congratulations, guys. And hopefully we'll have more casting uh, soon as the movie continues to ramp up. We have the new Five Nights at Freddy's trailer that just dropped today. The movie's going to be hitting theaters and Peacock, same day and date, on October 27th. So make sure you check it out. We had a little teaser about a month ago. This is the first full trailer, so definitely check that out. Congratulations to Ryan Seacrest. It is official. We heard the rumors, but now it's official. Starting in 2024, Ryan Seacrest will take the stage as the new host of Wheel of Fortune. That's right. Him and Vanna White will be uh, solving them puzzles. Stitcher, one of the biggest podcast listening apps, is going out of business. That's really sad. As somebody that's been doing podcasts for a decade now, Stitcher was a great partner. They were one of the first podcast apps that we were ever on, way before there was a Spotify, an iTunes. Um, and you know, like you, if you were a podcast, you were on Stitcher. Um, it's still one of my things. Every week when I tell you where you can find us, I still always say Stitcher. Uh, even though I don't even know anybody that listens on Stitcher anymore. Um, but it is sad to see because it's kind of like legacy, you know, like the big podcast app is shutting down. And that's really, really sad to see. So big shout out and big love to Stitcher for uh, being there from the very beginning for Am I on the Air. In some sad news, actor Julian Sands, uh, who has been missing since January, they said that he was uh, hiking in the California mountains. And they haven't heard from him since January, and they've been looking and searching. Well, it looks like some other uh, hikers were up in that area and found some human remains a couple days ago. And they had those checked out, and it is now official. Uh, he is confirmed dead after going missing in the California mountains. So rest in peace to Julian Sands. Um, what a horrible story there to go hiking and then be missing all these months since January. And just now having your remains identified. So, very, very sad news. Over on the Netflix chart, Extraction 2 is the most viewed movie. And Black Mirror Season 6 uh, leads the TV chart. So, congratulations to really good things leading those charts there. Uh, and Among Us animated series is in the works over at CBS. So, might be a little too late on that. But maybe the kids will still love it. Uh, we got an article up with Phoebe Waller-Bridge talking about her direction and what she wants to do for the upcoming Tomb Raider TV show that she's going to be doing. We have some Venom 3 set photos showing Tom Hardy uh, in the upcoming sequel that they're currently filming. Uh, a Murder at the End of the World. We have the teaser trailer set there for the new Hulu th uh, thriller. Back in Action, which is a new movie that had Jamie Foxx and Cameron Diaz bringing her out of retirement. We've heard about a big troubled production, and they're saying that that has been going on way before Jamie Foxx is even hospitalized. So no specifics of why this is a troubled production, um, but just an interesting article trying to break it down. We uh, I found out that Max Beasley is joining Guy Ritchie's new upcoming Netflix series for The Gentleman. Uh, Paramount Plus is removing even more shows. It doesn't stop, right? We just talked about other shows as being pulled. Well, now more are being pulled off the platform because today, like I said, is the revamp of Paramount Plus as they combine with Showtime. And uh, they have removed Inside Amy, Schumer, Inside Amy Schumer from Cradle to Stage, um, a documentary series based on Dave Grohl's mother's book, Tell Me a Story. The Ghislaine Partner in Crime, a documentary series about Ghislaine Maxwell, the partner of Jeffrey Epstein, uh, all pulled from the streaming service as of today, along them with the movies Fantasy Football, 
and Snow Day have also been removed. Plus, a ton of Nickelodeon programs have also been taken off the streaming service that include All In with Cam Newton, Allegra's Window, Becca's Bunch, Bella and the Bulldogs, Crash Leets, Digby Dragon, The Fresh Beat Band, The Halo Effect, Legendary Doodahs, Monsters vs. Aliens, Mutt and Stuff, Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn, Peter Rabbit, Pete Goat, Banana Cricket, and Ride in the Troop. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, the only one I know of that whole thing is my daughter watched uh, Nicky, Ricky, Dicky, and Dawn. So I was familiar with that one, thanks to my daughter. But uh, yeah, the rest of that stuff. Eh. So yeah, so Paramount Plus still be yanking them off there. Futurama Season 8 trailer has dropped for the Hulu return, so check that out. James Gunn says Suicide Squad 2, there are no plans for anything uh, continuing that storyline. The Rey movie in the Star Wars universe will be the next chapter of the Star Wars franchise, so we'll see where it takes it from there. We have the final season trailer for Billions, that's right, the last um, last season trailer will premiere On August 11th over on Paramount Plus with Showtime. So make sure you check that out for one last showdown. As Billions wraps up. A new DC story. It's going to be a documentary series to explore the grand um, world of superheroes. So watch the trailer and you find out when it's coming to Max. Uh, I think... Oh, John Leguizamo, his new show, uh, Leguizamo Does America, has been renewed for season two over on MSNBC. Uh, Showtime officially folded into Paramount Plus as of today, like we talked about there, but that is official. And that officially wraps up our podcast for tonight. So, man, we continue our amazing streak of wrapping up right around that 40 minute. Whoa. So, uh, yeah, 40 minutes, baby. I like it a lot. So that'll do it for us here tonight on this Tuesday, June the 27th. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Uh, On next week's show, we should be reviewing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I'm not even really that excited for this movie, man. I'm a little bummed. I'm just kind of like, meh. I'm kind of almost in a point in my head that I'm like, if I see it, cool. If I don't, I don't. I am going to see it. We're already getting tickets, but I'm just kind of blah on the whole thing. Uh, And it disappoints me because it should be cooler than that. But that's what we're looking to see this weekend. We'll see what other stuff floats our boat. And, um, but yeah, so let's do some shout outs. Am I on the air.com is the official webpage. Make sure you bookmark it. Everything you need is right there. Am I on the air.com like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Follow us on Twitter at simply am I on the air. You can follow me at DX Don mega all one word. If you'd like to read any of these other full articles or check out any of these trailers I talked about, our Twitter page is the best. Just go twitter.com slash am I on the air. You don't even have to have a Twitter account. Bookmark that. And follow our feed to get all the news of the week. Um, And then, of course, subscribe to the podcast over here on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, um, you know, Google Podcasts. We're on everything. So make sure you subscribe on whichever one you like the best. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to us on TikTok and on Instagram and on YouTube. All simply at Am I on the Air. And thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio and the Pop Culture Pros. Make sure you follow both at Red Dragons Radio, all one word, reddragonsradio.com, and the pop culture underscore pros over on Twitter. Um, Both networks always streaming our show on demand every single week, and we really appreciate it. And that'll do it for me once again. I hope you feel caught up with all the latest and the greatest. So take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all, peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!